All right. Let's see what jobs we got today. What? Is that a million dollars? Wait, is that $3.4 million? I mean, thank God for insurance, because, I mean, we've got more than that to pay, but, you know. <laughs> but, um... I heard more mine east, so I'm going to be running the northerly route. Yeah, I think uh, I think that's the one to do. Uh, FH21, okay. Um... Deer Hole Valley's been a strange place lately. These are, um... They're spicy train cars. <laughs> Giant chili pepper. Well, I mean, it's at least it's accurate. And then this is, uh, oh, well... Yeah. <laughs> oh... What's up, guys? This is Heist. Today we're playing Daryl Valley, and, uh... The amount of silly cars that have shown up, uh, is a little absurd. Like these bed flat cars. <laughs> they're flatbeds, right? Oh my goodness. And the truck cars, they're just trucks. They hop down the tracks. Crypto Neo has brought a lot of fun to the game with these, um... We we saw them on a recent Dear Old Valley live stream where uh, <laughs> there's cans of beans that he added, and they have my logo on them, which is hilarious. So we were literally hauling the beans, but these these bananas for scale are huge. Jeez. But uh, this is fun stuff. I don't know if this is a glitch or if this is actually going to be $3.4 million. Um, either way, I think we're going to try and haul that. And this is the FH21. This is this job. Um, so we're gonna do that, but we also have a new thing to show off as well today, other than Crypto Neo's silly train cars, and that is a new locomotive to try out, and that is the Yugoslavia Railways Class 661, which is actually a DE6, but the prototype a little bit older and high hood and oriented for long hood travel. It's got a couple different schemes, so let's see, got this one the default like this with no logo we have Yugoslavian Railways which is presumably what Yugoslavinsky Zelenice means the Z with a hat is a little J sound so presumably that's what that stands for I know a little bit of Croatian not much and then Croatian Railways blue which I really think is a beautiful paint scheme but this model's made by Boss, and he had sent me pictures of it and was telling me about it and asked if I would take a look at it. And he sent me the pictures, and I was like, yeah, I've seen the real one. Yeah, I can I can take a look at that for sure. And uh, fun fact, my family is originally from Croatia, and uh, presumably my mom will watch this, and she'll be cringing at my pronunciation of uh, <laughs> the... Uh, the term for Yugoslavian railways, because I don't actually speak the language, but um, my grandma's actually from Croatia, so this is kind of along my heritage, and in 2018, I got to go to Croatia on tour, actually, playing music, playing Croatian traditional music, tambura music, and uh, yeah, we stopped by the Zagreb National Railroad Museum, or Railway Museum, and they have a 661 there. But one of the, my favorite things about this locomotive mod specifically is that there's actual proper operation of the, of the lathe shaft which is what this control emulates though it's in the wrong spot because this is the default de6 interior normally this is actually off of the governor of the locomotive which we talked about in diesel 101 a little bit but this actually just controls the fuel rack so you can mechanically just increase the throttle and you can hear the throttle ticking up and down in the cab because it actually is just throttle control so this is a way that you can dump more fuel in when you go to start. Crank the starter over. And we're throttled up. 
which is way cooler and a better sim than what the original DE6 does. So cheers to Boss for getting that right. That's awesome. A cool thing about this that you probably already noticed, though, is that... Hang on. It's got two control stands. <laughs> so you can run long hood forward, or you can run short hood forward, and both control stands work, which is pretty cool. So the, the one complaint that I have is that uh, we we tried this out on a live stream recently is that the doors are a little bit weird and they don't respond to scroll wheel properly so <laughs> the door is always snapping shut when you leave the locomotive it's just a normal D-Roll Valley thing but uh, then them not working with the scroll wheel has led to a couple hilarious ES and D moments so <laughs> but uh, we're just about set up here our caboose is here from that last job, but I don't know how much I want to go dig it out. So I think uh, I think we're going to get on the road and go turn this job in. So we're going to go see about making some money here. I really, really hope it's $3.4 million because that would be great. Okay, debt needs to be reduced. You've got a debt to pay. Oh, well, you know. There was a, uh, a whole other segment that I tried to film for DRL Valley right before this. And uh, it just turned into just a mess. So uh, we started over, but maybe the uh, the S and D conductors will get that one as a special special episode. <laughs> All right, let's kick the air off. And it's weird that the air brakes are reversed. That's how they're set up. So let's get out of town here. Jobs accepted. What is our time? We got a 50 minute time bonus. Our job's not accepted. I just paid my fees and then I didn't do anything with the job. Let Get me out. Yeah, that's the one problem. I think accelerates quick too. Let's get to the station. Bang, there we go. 50 minutes. We've got the train. We gotta get to the iron ore mine east and dump it off at C4. Okay. Now that's not auspicious at all, C4 with me. Anyways, the air brake stands are backwards, which is apparently how they actually are, which is kind of bizarre, but also kind of neat. And byproduct of long hood, anytime you go around a left-hand curve, you can't see anything. It's kind of awesome. God, those truck cars are just very silly. I might end up turning that mod off just because it, th it throws the li limited immersion of the game off when you get the silly stuff like that. But hang on, we got a we got a hundred right here, so let's get straight to eight and get this thing moving. For those who didn't know what I meant by ESD conductors, we have channel memberships on the channel. ESD brakemen and ESD conductors, all part of the train crew of the ESD, which of course is my uh, silly fictitious railroad name called the Eat Shit and Die. Which, you know, it's good stuff. Now, remember last time I ran this, hang on, that it suddenly turns. So we get up to 100, we dump the air. Yeah, because this turn comes up very quickly. We end up, th we threw a locomotive off this turn, like, really, really far the other, one of the, one of the live streams. <laughs> so we'd like not to do that. But anyways, the, uh, the channel members get a couple extra perks, and then they also help support me monetarily, which helps me make more awesome videos for you guys, and I really genuinely appreciate it. So thank you all for subscribing, and of course to the channel members for joining the channel. But as I was referencing that, uh, that extra clip that I filmed, then it might end up just going out for the ESD conductors, which is a special rank where they also get a couple extra like blooper reel videos and extra behind the scenes stuff so if that sounds interesting to you and you'd like to help support there's a join link in the description okay we got a 50 coming up and we've <laughs> we've just about bled our brake pipe out oh yeah this is sharp here we're still doing about 60 so just give it a nice big set kick it off we only have five cars I really hope it's worth the three million dollars it says it is, and that's not a glitch, because A, we could use the three million dollars, but also B, uh, you know, <laughs> we could use the three million dollars. But very easy with uh, only five cars, and, and not hazmat, it's kind of bizarre, it must, it must be a glitch, but I don't know, maybe we'll win the lottery here. We got a 40 coming up. Yeah, just dump, dump the air from across the cab, it's fine train breaks and, and responds really snappy. God, it's been it's been so long since I've only run such a short train in Deer All Valley. 
Oh, come on, sweetheart. It slips just like the normal DE6. It is apparently the same prototype as the DE6. I'm not sure what the lineage difference is. Uh, because they're both export EMDs. But maybe, I guess, this is just the one for Yugoslavia Railways. But it's a very cool model. And I really appreciate Boss's work on making it work. It's, it's really cool. <laughs> All right. It's probably fast enough. We're snaking around into the iron ore mine west right now. But we got to get to the iron ore mine east. So we got to run across the top of the map here. And it looks like we're lined through the straight here, so that's good. So now let's rip the throttle wide open. See what we can see. <laughs> got the 464 over there, which has cursed us before. Some more flatbeds. Tee <laughs> There's so many random cars in my dear old valley anymore. It's, it's like, oh, there's that hopper. There's that hopper. Got a bunch of different things with custom car loader, which is an awesome plug-in. That allows for so many things, including this diesel. 70 coming through here. Yeah, this is this engine's actually honestly pretty overkill for this train, probably, but should make quick work of it. Throttling up a little bit now that we're coming through the tunnel, the curves biting us a little bit. And we got an 80, so we'll get it ripping pretty good here. These bulkhead flats are also custom. There's a lot of great stuff on Nexus mods as far as custom cars, and they're really easy to install. You just install the custom car loader mod and then drop folders into the, uh, the folder, basically, and then they work. Got a 90 coming up now. 90 in the... For a very short amount of time, now it's 80. It's shut off, and then it's gonna go down to 60, so I guess we'll just let it ride. It's so bizarre running a diesel long head forward. A lot of railroads in the States did that for a long time. Like, I think the Southern uh, Railroad did it that way, and a lot of old engineers liked it because they wanted the, the, cu the cushion in case there was an accident or a grade crossing incident or something that, um, you know, they had all the locomotive in front of them and rather than them being on the point of it. But, I mean, it, in my my view, in most cases of those accidents, either you're, you're hitting something and destroying it or the hit is so big that it doesn't really matter where you are. <laughs> Which is kind of why we ended up going to all short hood operation. But all right. Holding 60, we got a 40 kilometer an hour coming up about 700 meters. Presumably through that cut there. I love this northern end of the map. It's really pretty. Okay, it's coming up about half a kilometer. We'll take a little set on the air. And let that do its thing, kick it off. We'll come in nicely here. A lot of folks always ask about what mods I use, and uh, Zybok himself messaged me earlier and said that Airbrake now has an option for PSI, which would really help with my understanding of it, because I don't have a good... I, know, I can do the math, and I know that a bar is about 14.7 PSI or whatever, but I don't have an immediate feel of this is what the brake does, but th this is my list of mods. Se several of them are turned off right now, and that's just because uh, my game started to lag pretty hard with the procedural sky and all the night stuff. That's really cool, but when you're in the harbor and you've got a 50 car train uh, and two steam engines, yeah, I mean, it was a slideshow. So in order to try and switch that out, I ended up turning all that stuff off. So, but let's go into the air brake mod and see if we can't see where PSI is. No, well, it's not an air brake. It might be in the heads up display. Oh yeah, feet, brake pipe, PSI, yes. Why are we stopping? Oh. I wonder if changing to PSI messed with the brake pipe setup entirely. Because it didn't change any brake valves. Anyway, weird. We're pulling through it. It's fine. Did it change the gauges? Now, the gauges are all in bar, but my heads up display, I can see my brake pipe is 55 PSI now. 
Yeah, and it should be about 90, so it's definitely not charged all the way. <laughs> but my reservoir reading is still in bar. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to modulate that here. Got another 40 coming up. All right, so let's take a five pounder. Okay. Well, it seemed to do what I wanted it to do. That's actually a good quality of life thing, but I'd like it to get up to the value it's supposed to be at. Let's see what else we can grab. Oh, we can get boiler pressure in there. Oh, that's fun. And there's precision scaling. Reservoirs, PSI. Give me all the PSI, please. Alright. Throttle up here. Oh, and we can see that my reservoir is only at 58. That's part of the problem. Got a 90 coming up through here, so let's get after it. And it immediately goes down to 70, that's fine. Doesn't look like my um, my brakes are charging all the way on this thing. I'm not sure why. We've got an 80 coming up through the tunnel. Get back on the power. Another 60s coming up. It's a lot of speed limit changes all, all across this railroad up here. We're gonna see if we can't get going a little quick. Right, there's the 60. Don't slam on the brakes till you see the white of its eyes. There we go. Firmly playing the accordion with the train, but that's only appropriate for a Yugoslavian locomotive, right? <laughs> <laughs> we actually had a, a lot of accordion music that we would play. We had a, a pretty talented accordionist. I usually would accompany the dance number stuff, but I played the bass. The evil Croatian bass. It's not evil, it's just very weird. I played a, a Berda and a Farkac. And, uh,. They're both interesting instruments. The Berda is tuned like a normal upright bass. It has huge frets and huge steel strings instead, and you pick it instead of uh, pluck it with your fingers. Play with a giant pick, usually made out of some kind of bone. Very cool, very percussive sound. And as my mom always says, it needs to be in the unplugged version of Kashmir. And then the Farkach is its uh, bastard cousin that is tuned in pairs G, G, D, D and you play two pairs of giant steel wound strings at a time and uh, that murders your fingers. Not, not fun. I play a lot of guitar and my fingers still never really dealt with playing those basses when the time came. I got a 50 sneaking up on us here so we'll just get that set up nice. I'm not sure why the reservoir on the engine's at 58 and the reservoir on the cars is at 70. But my equalizing's at 73, but I can never get the brake pipe to match it, which is weird. I don't know if that's a byproduct of me changing the units after the fact or what, but. Maybe that was nice and tight through there. Now we're coming kind of close to the food factory here. Give it a 
got some power here. Speed, power, beans. Some amount of spicy Deer Isle Valley sounds, but that might be just from the jumping truck wheel sets that we have back there. Right, we've got an 80 coming up in a second here. Let's see what we can see out this side. Yeah, short hood visibility is really, really nice. The long hood makes this an interesting challenge. Need multiplayer so that we can have it. But yeah, I'm released. What well, my brake pipe never comes more than 58. But the cars have a higher reservoir. I'm not, I'm not sure what's going on there. That's a little spicy through there. Lord knows what we're lined through at the food factory. Food factory C to food factory B. That should be okay. We'll find out at very high speed here. B5 SP. Oh, we're rooted through a station platform. Well, that'll be interesting. Blow through with some excavators through the platform. I do have my passenger license, by the way. We can do a passenger job. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that. I think that, that might be the next video, but I wanted to run some freight with this guy. Kind of feels right. Though I think, from what I recall, they actually did run passenger with this locomotive as well. It just makes me think of, like, a, an SD9 or something, though, in the States. It just felt like freight would make sense. 50 coming up, so we're gonna set them up. I'm gonna set them up nice and hard. Okay, lines to the right, which I presume is okay. Lines to the right, lines to the left. Oh, we are lined through. Oh man, there is like nothing in this yard. That's kind of crazy. We're lined, yes, we're lined into another train. Stopping. I could grab the comms radio if I was really good, but I'm not. Okay. Back it up. Or we could just kick passenger cars again. That, that worked so well last time. Back it up. <laughs> you guys gonna release? Why is the reservoir not changing on the cars? You throw switches from the cab. Today I learned, must have really long arms. You can also only jump out the window with the teleport in this thing if it's, uh, if you like, hit the right spot of the window. It's kind of weird. But not perfect, but boss knows and he's gonna work on it, so. Also, I'm not sure what that horn is, but. back underway here. Presumably we don't have that 30 that's coming up yet. I think we only have a 50. So we'll just blitz through this real quick. It's a big passenger train. It's like six cars. Most of them are shorter than that. That's cool. This junction here, bang, and then here comes the 30. Nice and spicy through there, it's fine. We should have grabbed the chili pepper load. <laughs> I would have been stuck making this train is very spicy jokes the whole way through. So the throttles animate in both things, so you can see that we're in notch 7 here as well. And the reverser is kicked the other way, which is kind of fun. Although the, uh, the light switches seem to desync, which is kind of weird. 
I imagine that's an utter pain in the butt, though, so. We pulled through that 30 nice and easy. Now we're going to slam on the air for the next 30. While I stare at controls and not the railroad. You know, it's fine. And I think we're going to run up the spiral there. To iron ore mine. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to run up the spiral. But we are aligned towards... Why did we stop? Did we have that big of a set on there? Nothing went in the dirt, did it? Well, I mean, other than these cars that are always continuously derailing and re-railing. Ah! Falls off bridge. What's going on, Choo Choo? Brakes are all released. No, no force. Um, sand, notch eight. What is going on, sir? I'm not sure what's going on, but I always feel like more locomotives is a good solution, so. Do, 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 do. Can't spawn on the bridge. That doesn't bode well. We've had one 661, but two 661s six is better, right? Okay. I guess we can run. We can run short hood. <laughs> Well, this train can move. Can it? When you put it in notch eight, notch eight peg? Um, there is an invisible block. <laughs> has, has something gone wrong in one of these mods somewhere? Air brake mod is freaking out. Well, that would probably explain part of the problem. Okay, well, I guess I'm going to re reload DRL Valley again. <laughs> All right, we've reloaded. Presumably, we won't need two of these, so we'll just get that one out of the way. Get on the bridge here. Can the choo-choo go? Nope, we want to be over here. Forward. Break off, break off. Let's go. Oh, our brake. <laughs> brake pipes charging nice and slow. I guess we'll just leave that throttled up while it attempts to build air, presumably. And. Okay, now we've re restarted. <laughs> okay, we the train is showing an emergency now. Okay. And the brake handle is an emergency. Let's release it. We're in service. Will we move? I want to get the bonus time. I want to get seven million dollars. <laughs> Come on, game. Let me go. You're not derailed. You're not derailed. Nothing's derailed. It just won't move. It won't even roll. It's like not even on a grade. Okay. Well, we have one of them. Let's get two. Let's get both liveries going. There we go, and ramming speed. Okay, 
Trains can move in this video game. That is an exciting prospect. The horn doesn't work on this one, that's fine though. Ramming speed. Gentle ramming speed, I might add. Bunk. I'll just put this in eight and leave it. What is this? What is this crap doing? <laughs> We've got a diesel in notch eight back there, and it's just not moving this at all. Do we just need more power? Like, like what? What is going on? Oh, I double clicked, so we ended up with another. Fancy tender, that's fine. Um, and yeah, I think I think we're gonna just we're gonna bring in the steam because that seems like the way that we solve this problem. I don't want to throw the comms radio in there. I want to throw that in there. Which whistle did we get blessed with? Polar Express. I don't know if I can abide by that, but that's all right. Let's get fire rolling here. Come on. This is going to be the longest episode ever just because we can't move anything. All right. Walk onto the train here. And bang. Well, now we've got hardcore wheel slip, which is kind of hilarious. Notch it down a little bit. The other one's wheel slipping. It's fine. We don't care about wheels around here. What is going on? Can we Polar Express our way out of this? It's like this locomotive is welded to the ground. You know what? Bye bye. You don't exist anymore. Okay, that Oh boy. Well now we've got now we've got an interesting predicament. Where our distributed power is now shoving our train at us, but our steam engine's pulling away. <laughs> we, <clears throat> apparently, we accidentally welded that to the rails, so that was the problem. We're back underway. Uh, I'm going to get my remote turned on so we can actually run this as a DP. And then... Oh, here. <clears throat> looks like we've made a joint here. Um... Continue, continue going. Commence, start, begin. Get the airflow. Shove, continue please. Why, why was it working and now it's not? Oh, well that's fine. Uh, you know what? We'll get rid of the, the second cursed tender here. And just let the steam engine roll away. What is what is going on? Are these just... Well, like, this spot of track is just not happy with existence and these locomotives. I'm gonna overheat that diesel. Is this other one welded to the track now? Oh, it overheated and died. You know what? <laughs> I, 
I don't know what the problem is, but 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 we're just gonna run with the steam engine now. <laughs> Cause I don't know what it, the, the 661s are doing something there, and I don't know what. And I don't even know if it's the 661's fault, but I'm being superstitious at this point. So. We're gonna go for it now. However, that said, ooh, we've got some fun stuff going on there. Z sounds dot apply sound southern three chime. And you'll note that it's not the southern three chime, it's It's my Santa Fe 6. Not my Santa Fe 6, but one of my uh, cut recordings of a Santa Fe 6 chime. All right. Well, we're just gonna get the uh, we're gonna take it take it to town with the steam engine, I guess. Now, how many different locomotives did we have for this five car consist? Too many. All right. It's interesting to note that it's still showing the um, still showing some of the brake mod stuff in the. Um, <laughs> in the HUD, so I'm not entirely certain what's going on there, but and I believe that we've got a 30 coming up, and we're gonna have to line the switch as well. So bring the brake on there for that turn, just the independent, because we're being bad and we're looking for the switch. It's coming up right here. There's the switch. And there's no sad passenger cars from days of old in there, so that's good. Get some coal flying in there. It's uh, nice and spicy. This is a very spicy round Y. And I looked back and I saw the trucks doing that and I thought we were derailed, but no, it's just how those work. All right, doing 40. Nice and happy, good hot fire, no blower rolling. All right, we got a 70 coming up in a bit, but we gotta keep running through the 40 till we get there. Keep a light amount of power on as we go. So it looks like, no, okay, so the the positioning of the brakes, it, it'll show force despite the position of the independent changing, which is interesting. Zybok has modeled an actual S6 independent with the five locations or the five positions like I talked about in my Air Brakes 101 video. Um, but obviously with the mod turned off, it, it won't work. So I can scroll and it'll go through the different positions in the bottom of the HUD there. It says an independent brake position, but uh, it's actually applying force when it goes to running. So feeding it a little bit more bar here. This is not the steepest grade in the world, but it's definitely a bit stout. So we've got to get up and over ourselves here. And I have no idea if we're going to make the time bonus because how many times I had to restart the game. And we just passed a 40 marker for this curve here, right as it levels off. They want to lull me into a false sense of security. Yeah, that's tight. Nice and spicy through there. It's fine. Got another 40. Oh, and that's the military entrance. And we just came out of there recently. So we gotta be ready on that switch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when were you in the military, Sice? Oh, or is that not the military? Am I thinking of the wrong junction? Hang on. We're slamming on the brakes because we don't know what we're doing. Um, oh, I guess, no, we're actually in the wrong spot, but we can go this way, so we will go this way. Because, yeah, we could... Actually, this might be quicker. 
I don't know. Though this bit of railroad kind of sucks. It's really, really windy. That's all right. Oh man, it is nice to look at the boiler pressure in PSI, I tell you what. It's only in the HUD. I need to get the updated gauges for that too. That's flat track through here. Got a 40 coming up and we're not quite doing 40, but the cars are chattering a bit. All right, well, this is a fun view. And I can actuate the throttle from here, which is handy. Well, it sounds like we're picking up a little speed, and we are. Yeah, it is just curve central going through there. And we might actually, I don't know if there's a Y at the iron ore mine, we might have to reverse down into the last track by going this way. And it might actually be a little bit longer, but it was the way the switch was lined, because I lined it that way. Oopsie. It's fine. Uh oh, we put too much water in. <laughs> We've run, run our pressure down. We can start getting some serious heat generation, though. Big fire. Make a big fire! Okay, 50 coming up, and then a 70 after that. And we're not even doing quite 50. But our pressure's back on the rise now that we've fed the fire. I gotta say, the custom diesels are cool, but I love my steam engines. <laughs> and I'm not sure what, what the problem was that was causing all those issues earlier. So. Maybe a smarter commenter who probably uh, caught, or a smarter viewer caught what I was doing, and it's probably something stupid, simple. It's a bit of a spicy curve, but we'll keep the power on, get up to that 70 across and the rest of it. Only to then go down to 60, but it's still uphill and we're, we're barely doing 60, so I'm just going to bring the reverser back and just fight the hill with the throttle wide open. We got a 70 coming up and then a 50. See, so yeah, we're just gonna keep on carry on right now. We seem to be walking up the hill, but I mean, we're only pulling five cars. Okay. Now feed it the power. And then it's, uh, it's 50 into a 30, okay. We'll set up a little air here. We'll just leave it working because we hate our steam pressure. There's the 50, kicking the set off. And by the time it releases, we'll be doing about 30. He can totally work against the air. That's not necessarily the most economical thing to do, but technically it is smooth. This is no change in power output from the, the lead. Well, it got us down to about 40, and then the, the set kicked off, so I'm just going to shut the throttle nice and gently. We'll sneak around this curve here. Yeah, we're in the, we're in the madness of the S-curves, I think, here. Yeah, this is the annoying squiggly bit. We've got a Rio Grande painted engine, but we don't have a, a painted tender. Silliness with spawning trains in. 2.9% <laughs> grade. Okay, this is really steep through here. Only got 400 tons behind us though, so it's just kind of a walk in the park, really. I imagine this is probably your primary route to come into the military, but no, you probably go from the other way. 
I'm not sure what you'd run on this line for otherwise, unless you're confused like me. So. And it seems like the, the speed limit through is 30, but we're easily doing 40 right now, so I'm not sure why it's set to 30. And those, yeah, those are the S-curves up there. This is a pretty, pretty chunk of railroad. And that's just working. Yeah, we're theoretically still on 30 until we get to, uh, <laughs> to that 50 in like 800 meters. So we're just going to ease it back a little bit. And apparently they don't believe in putting fills here. Why wouldn't they fill that out to have some straight track? <laughs> Nice and spicy through there. Okay, that's the line of the military base over there. Because that's the base. We'll do a military job on the channel one of these days. I only have the first military license. So I can really only haul empty cars. Pretty much just gets you access to the base. You really have to have the first two to really make it worth it. Almost up to that 50. And it doesn't look too spicy through here. Although, right before the speed board, it's a little sharp through here. Ah, it's fine though. Alright. That was the switch I was worried about earlier, but I didn't know where we were, so. Right. And we're up, already up to 50 at this 50. It's promptly gonna go to 40, so. Finish the climb, we'll feed it some water there. I finished most of the climb at least. It seems like we still are climbing. I think that's our destination up ahead. Let's see. Yeah, dead ahead, but there's a big bridge to get to it over there. So we're gonna have to see. I don't think there's a Y. I think we're just gonna have to back down, which will be interesting, considering I don't think I can stand on the rear most car of the train as a shoving platform because it's just a pile of trucks that float. The whistle says, Ugh. It's been a minute since we've had the talkative whistle in a video. It's all over the last live stream, but... We've been spending so much time playing with Greg's awesome choo-choos that we haven't given the SH-282 much love. Okay. About to find out if there's a Y or not. Still one more giant pile of S-curves to do. It's like a bunch of hopper cars over there. Somehow I think I'm not getting the time bonus. We'll just see. Yeah, not looking like there's a Y. There's some floating track though, that's a neat feature. Shutting off, setting them up a little bit. Nice and easy. Roll past the switch. Keep it pulling a little bit. Got two cars to go. Three cars, two cars. I'm gonna shut off and just let it coast to a stop there. Is it clear the switch or not? No one knows. That's the fun. All right. And put her in reverse. Kick the air off. 
Come on. Getting a little quarter slips out of it. Okay, what yard track do we need to go to? We need to go to C4 inbound. Oh, that's right. The, uh, the silly one. Which I think is... That's B over there. C4 is over here. And it sounds like we're going quite fast already. Which is not good. Yep. Going a little quick. These are down to track speed there, sweetheart. Okay, it looks like we are in fact lined into C4. Alright. And our speed... Oh, we're doing four. We could pretty much hold this, but we just need a little set on the train. So we'll set it up. Blow our stop whistle here. So we slam into yard limits at great speed. This train car is just so silly. Okay. I don't know if C4 is a stub or not. The way that it looks, it looks like it's almost like it's a stub. But I don't think it is. I don't think there are stubs in D-Roll Valley, really. Unless this is like the one. No, it's not a stub. The HUD was confusing though. All right, well, we are all there. Slam on the brakes. Where is the Iron Ore Mine Station building? Uh, here it is. Okay, come on, give me my millions of dollars. 53 minutes. Hell. Oh my God, it was actually worth $3 million. <laughs> Oh my god, it wasn't a glitch, it wasn't a dream. Okay, uh, fees. Well, man, but now I have all this money. And I only have to pay $400,000, but there's nothing to blow up. We we didn't realize that we were going to be able to do this. I think, um, hmm, hmm, you know what, we'll pay it. We'll pay it so that next time... Next time we can do the thing. So we'll, we'll go to pay the biggest thing. You pay, it pays the 400,000. We still have $3 million. We're gonna, we're gonna buy our licenses and uh, yeah, this, this means good things. Military three, hazmat three. I don't know why they would ever license me with these, but um, yeah. So that's going to be it for this episode of Hero Valley, but um, I guess you know where the next episode of Hero Valley is going to go. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, guys. This has been a bit of an interesting one, a bit of a fun one. We ended with a different locomotive than we started with. It's fine. Cheers to Boss for making a great new locomotive. Cheers to Zybok for the great mods as well and lots and lots of fun with DRL Valley. So let me know if you're excited for next time's videos. Uh, I know that I'm excited to finally get to play with the fun, really explodey boys. The seriously explodey boys. We're gonna have to come up with another name for those because those are extra special. But thanks so much for watching everyone. Make sure you click the like button. If you're new here, click the subscribe button. Click the bell if you wanna know when we're uploading stuff. As always, special thanks to our ESD train crew, our brakemen and conductors that we talked about who help support the channel monetarily and get a little bit of an extra special perk on their end. And they're getting a little extra special episode this week. Uh, uh, raw, uncut shenanigans from uh, <laughs> earlier that didn't work out. So anyways, thanks so much for watching everyone. We'll catch you all next time.